for the beautiful prayer. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. It's a blessing that you took your time out to be here. And I'm so glad. Last week, I had the occasion to be, as Elder Gather says, in Arlington, Kentucky. I had three celebrations loaded, loaded into one. And Sister Leotine, honest to goodness, you stole my scripture because when I looked around at the crowd, black and white, that's all we have in our town, black and white. Well, we have a few others. And I saw and I said to myself, how good, how pleasant it is that we can all assemble here just and be together. Most of us hadn't seen each other for like 20 or 30 or 40 and sometimes some of us 50 years. I went home last year for the 50th high school reunion and that was a blessing. It's good that even in DWIC, as you mentioned about the third row, the sense of oneness, even though I wasn't out there, I saw everything that everyone was doing to bring it all together. So that sense of oneness, that sense of abundance, all united under DWIC. I thought about the salt covenant, the godly relationships that happened. We are the salt of the earth according to the word. According to Luke 14, we are to share kindness and goodness and that we should be agents of human flourishing. We should be like the flavoring that I saw my mother put in cakes many, many times to just kick it up a notch. We are spiritual agents and as we were, if we could say we are spiritual fertilizers for the kingdom because we're helping to sustain, to preserve and to signify his faithfulness. Jesus represented salt. He preserves life. He's faithful to his promises. And as Sister Linda said, we don't know how he's going to do it, but he always comes through. So he is the epitome of the salt of the earth. Loyalty, oneness, we are lasting. It's all about the salt. Even the salt in manure has a purpose. There are minerals in salt, and it says that salt will break down the fresh excrement so that the plants can even do better. So as salt of the earth, it is our job to help souls to turn around so that there is no rottenness in their souls and that they can be restored. So God is a God of restoring. My scripture today is gonna to come from the 12th chapter of Mark. And we all know it, Mark 12 verses 30 to 31. And it says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. That's a lot of loving. It's not easy loving, but it's a lot of loving. And the second verse says, the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And there are no other commandments greater than these two. That's the foundation for what I will be talking about today. My topic, as was repeated before, elements of a godly relationship. What is a relationship? A relationship is the, are the words, the interactions, the behaviors that we direct to each other. No doubt, we engage in some type of relationship every day. We can probably count how many we've engaged in already. So this connection forms a relationship and it determines the degree of salt that we share with each other. Before I get started, I'm gonna ask you to focus real quickly for a second or two. I want to ask that you think about a relationship with a godly person that has gone awry, it's gone downhill, it has spiraled out of control. I want you to think about the face of that person. I want you to take a note of what you were thinking about, what may have fueled that interaction. Where were you? No doubt some of you may be able to see what you had on, what they had on. What triggered this response? 
Was anyone throwing fuel on the fire? Did something happen before the encounter? And so what I want you to do right now is just to freeze that scenario and we'll come back to it a little bit later. The four elements of a godly relationship that I have for you today, ladies, number one is love. Number two, to look beyond yourself. Look beyond yourself. Number three, lay down boundaries. And number four, labor. We have to do the work. After all, maintaining a relationship requires work. Would you not say? We've all been in relationships that it took a lot of work sometimes, more than we care to expand. Like our relationship with Christ. We have to get in his presence. We praise him, spend time with him. We pray, we worship. We tell him how grateful we are to have it in our life. And we thank him for all the goodness and the mercy that he has given us. If I may, I also want to add a few truths before we go further. Number one, even if all parties in the relationship consider themselves godly, there can still be bumps and lumps in the road. When we find ourselves unequally yoked, in a relationship that makes a tumultuous life. It's tough to be unequally yoked. We know what 1 Corinthians 7, 14 says about the sanctified partner, but that is for later. And the third thing I want to consider as a truth is that godly relationships can very much deteriorate, especially when we start to conduct ourselves the way people outside of the will of God handle matters. First of all, let me get back to my love. Number one element. If we talk about love. I remember a poet once, Elizabeth Barrett Brown, and asked a question of her little suitor. She says, how do I love you? Let me count the ways. And I thought about if God were to look into our lives, how many ways would he be able to find that would state, determine, show that we love him? We relate to God in so many different ways. And he says, if you obey me, if you obey me, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And remember those two commandments we talked about that were none greater, loving him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. As lovers of God and shepherds, we belong to him. We, we pray, and I recognize when Mark 11 says, when you pray and when you stand pray, I want you to forgive your sister or your brother. Mark 11, 25 through 26. I thought about the times when the Lord asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, and he'll say, Take care of my flock. I would imagine it was seconds later, he asked the question again, Peter, do you love me? And no doubt Peter probably said to himself, now didn't he just ask me that question? Yes, I love you. And he says, love my sheep, feed my flock, take care of my, my little ones. And he said again, the third time, Peter, do you love me? So I'm thinking Peter is becoming a little incensed at this time because this is the third time he's asked me this. And what would have been God's purpose to say, you know what, Peter, I'm hoping and praying that you love me because there's a lot of work to be done for the kingdom. Are you capable? Can you handle it, Sister Linda? Because a lot of things are gonna come your way. Can you handle it, Sister Annette? because there is so much work to do and can you go the race? Can you go the long rope, the long haul? Are you strong enough? Is it true love or is it, as they say when we were growing up, is it infatuation? Loving the Lord also requires loving ourselves. Now, for some people, loving ourselves is not a problem, it's not a challenge, but every day, Hundreds of people 
commit suicide? Is, is that self-love, lack of self-love? Some of us have been broken. We have been abused. We have been depressed. We've been weary. We've been anxious. We fear many things. And what do we do? We take this brokenness into a relationship, a new relationship, or it's still existing inside of an old relationship. That makes us a product of living under deception. If we think about the neighbor next door, it's difficult to love a neighbor that you rarely see if we are not in love with ourselves. It's difficult to love a neighbor who doesn't always act neighborly. Some neighbors have their hands out. Some neighbors uh, throw trash on your side. Some neighbors never cut their yards. Some neighbors outwardly show that they do not care for you as a neighbor. If you're going through, once again, it would be difficult to love your neighbor. So with that relationship, it may be a stretch. John 15 and 13 says, no greater love than for a man to lay down his life for his friend, his neighbor, the one that he doesn't really care much for. This distorted love can cause us to say things that should not come out of our mouths. It causes us to go off. We're angry, unforgiving, blaming, exercising poor emotions. This is the love element. Can you love yourself? Do you love yourself? And can you love your neighbor as yourself? What happens if you do love yourself? When you love yourself and know who you are, you can become an unstoppable force for the kingdom. You can squash the ugly. You can put the enemy under your foot. You can embrace ugly words and say, it's okay, it's all good. You know, I'm not going there today. You can find reason to love and the will to keep on loving. God loves us so much that he died for us. He was pierced, wounded, stabbed, crowned with thorns, everything, things poured on him. And he looked down and what did he say? He says, forgive them. They don't have a clue. They, they, they don't know what they're doing. But when we let go of our love and we wander into a place and a space that we were never meant to go. But if you love yourself, you'll stop it. You'll cut that thing off at the root. You'll forgive yourselves and others. And as the word says, you'll repent. That's number one. Number two, easing down the road, learning to look beyond yourself. A godly relationship requires that you cut out the me, me, me. There are some people who are so me, 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 they can't get the big picture. So when we remove the selfishness and put on the cloak of humility, we can freely engage in a godly relationship. We need to listen with our eyes, with our heart, listen with all of our senses. I love a quote from a nice man that says, we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. I'm gonna have to repeat that one more time because I, I really like, I've always liked that quote. We don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. So sometimes we have to get out of ourselves so, so we can see the real picture. Again, it boils down sometimes to forgiving again, Mark 11. And it also allows us and encourages us to be wise, wisdom and patience. Proverbs 19.11 says, wisdom and patience. It's good sense. It makes good sense to overlook a fault. How many of us still carry faults from past times? I looked at people during my reunion and I said, oh, I used to be mad at her. But I thought, what sense did that make 50 years ago? That person is no more the person you remember than you are the person 
that you once were. Sometimes we're so busy having a conversation in our own head, Sister Leah team, that we can't even hear what the other person is saying because we're so busy figuring out what we're gonna say next. So we just obliterate whatever they are saying. We need to get out of our own heads. You can't listen when you're pouring out old news and bad news. But if we could mimic our relationship with how we treat God, what a wonderful world it would be. That is, of course, if we treat God good. I want us to look at and be reminded of our own behaviors. As they say, nonverbal behavior is the highest form of communication. If we think about a person's look, if put your hands on your hips and let your backbone, if I think about the nods, the gestures, the body positioning, the space, how many times have we had people to really invade our space and they're just testing us, trying to see what this godly person is going to do? Well, our words are one of the most powerful tools in our spiritual arsenal. We can use our words to curse or to bring kindness. Words can start a relationship and words can certainly breach or curse a relationship. I always think about if we're engaging in a relationship, I want to walk away with my integrity and I want you to walk away with yours. But too often that relationship is, as I say, lopsided. We can't, uh, we can't cont continue on in a godly relationship if, you know, they say that there are certain distorted thinking patterns. How many of you have ever jumped to a conclusion and you were totally wrong? totally wrong. How many of us have thought things were either black or white, that there was no middle zone, it was either black or white, and that's the only way you could see it. How many of us have made a mountain out of a molehill? How many of us have gotten it all wrong, totally? Because your only goal was to win by any means necessary. Again, that selfishness. We need to look beyond ourselves. It's okay to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Please accept my apology. I messed up, I need you. It's okay to say, I give a compliment. It's not always about you. Be genuine, be sincere, be authentic. That is the hallmark of a godly relationship and a godly person. The third one I want to talk about is lay down boundaries. What are boundaries? It's when you teach others how to behave toward you. Boundaries add value to you. You establish what is and is not acceptable. You establish what you will expect, what you need, and what you, again, will or will not accept. How many times in a marriage have spouses controlled the other spouse just because there are no lines, no, no boundaries established? If you don't establish a boundary, anyone can control you from your children. How many times, oh, we want to be such a good parent, so we're going to let the children do this or that. And sooner or later, we lose control because there was no boundaries. There was no care for you. There is no punishment. There is no discipline. Laying down boundaries adds value to you. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. So if you don't have an understanding of what I want, and if I don't have an understanding of what you want, there's going to be a mismatch in our relationship. An old writer years ago says, good fences make good neighbors. Well, you know what? That is true and it is not true. 
Just because you have a good fence, it might keep the dogs and cats out of your yard, but does that make you a good neighbor? Fences establish rules and rules of engagement, but a true fence, a true fence is about a God really relationship where there is mutual good exchange. There is a connection, there is a respect. I'll look after your house when you're away, you look after mine. If I need something, I feel okay to ask you. And if you need something, I'm gonna give it to you if I can. So those are the boundaries that we need as even in a godly relationship. Learning to give, learning to receive. We gotta listen to others too. It's, again, it's both sides. Listen, stop being controlling, and then reflect. Watch your words, watch your attitude, watch your behaviors. And as Romans 12 to one of my favorites, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Sometimes if we keep those old negative thinking patterns going, <laughs> we, are, we are not renewed and we're going to stay stuck. So we have to change and be transformed. It's okay to say, my friend, my friend, sister, Nicole, I care about our relationship and I care about you. But when you say things like this, I feel disrespected. We have to be assertive and stand up. If nobody knows that they are insulting you and you never let them know, they won't know. Or they will know, but they, they'll say, oh, well, she's taking it. Let me just keep on dishing it out. Someone asked me once, well, how do we know if they're going to listen to us this time? And you can say, hey, I was, I'm a little smarter today than I was last week. I may not have said anything before, but I'm realizing I was only hurting and denying myself my true feelings but I'm becoming more important to myself. I'm stronger now. I'm stronger than my struggles. I'm stronger than the past junk that I've gone through. Element number four is the labor. There's a lady on TV says, you gotta do the work, do some work. Without labor, without action, nothing much changes. If you keep on doing what you've always done, you know the saying, you'll keep on getting what you've always got. So we have to do something different. Proverbs 14, 23 says, all hard work is profitable, but mere talk leads to poverty. So you do nothing, poverty happens. If you work hard, you can profit from that labor. Another person that I listen to the quote, I love it, says, knowing is not enough. We must be willing. Willing is not enough. We got to do. We must do. So sometimes we have to get our aprons dirty to create a good dish. Sometimes we have to do something different so that we can grow. Otherwise, we remain stagnant. Who wants to remain stagnant? I pray that these elements may have strengthened you in some way. When do I start to do these things? Maybe there's nothing that caught your eye today that, you're, that you need to change or do better. If, if that is so, then I'm happy for you. I'm happy for me because I, I get information from my own work and what God has downloaded to me. I think forgiving is a big piece, letting go, returning to God, go down into his stronghold, go down into his presence. That's where you're going to get the audio. That's where the change may start for some of us, maybe all of us. Sometimes we just work entirely too hard to skew God's word to make sense out of our own nonsense. It doesn't take all of that. It's, you're working too hard if God does not end up being the one for victory. He wants, we need the victory from God. And however he does it, we don't know, but that's what we want. We want what we want. But God says, if my people, 
2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from the wicked ways. So we do that. He says, if you'll do your part, this is what I'm going to do. I will hear from heaven, forgive your sins, and I'll heal your land. I'll heal whatever. I'll heal your finances. I'll, I'll heal your relationships. I'll heal that co-worker. That's what I'll do if you do your part. So we want to make it right. We want God's truth to be the last word. See, the enemy works hard to keep us at odds with those in our relationship with that family member that's always broke, with that family member that always has a need, that always says, I'm going to pay you back. I'll gladly, we had a cartoon that used to say, the man used to say, I would gladly pay you on Tuesday. It was always Tuesday and it never came. And I think that was Bluto or Popeye or somebody. He says, I'll gladly pay you on Tuesday. We have some neighbors who the Tuesday is never going to come for them. So Oftentimes, too, we, we have relationships and we look at a person a certain way and we realize it was never about that person. It was about, it was never about the issue. Have, have anyone ever been mad with anyone? And after a while, you didn't even remember what the issue was. You was just mad. You couldn't even remember. And it was not the issue. It was actually the person. So we would take that negative energy and create an opportunity for growth. Create an opportunity to apply the word, to apply God's word. God died for us not to have to go through these squabbles. This is lightweight. You know, there's a lot of big fish to fry. And I think that's why God was asking Peter, Peter, do you love me? Because you know, there's a lot of, lot of things we gotta get done. Because if you don't truly love me, it's not gonna happen. We need to recognize what is distracting us or who is distracting us or what place we're going to that is distractful and taken away from our relationship with God. We need to put God back into the conversation and back into the equation, make him the first thing of the day and not the last thought of the day. We need to unearth whatever that thing is that keeps us grounded wherever it is. We need to love more learn to look beyond ourselves, lay down the boundaries and do some work. Faith without works is, what is that word? Not, not dead. You are strong. You are the epitome of a godly character. You are well able to implement all these elements. You know, Sister Ned used to ask me, what is gonna be your thing that you're gonna talk about? And I always like to say that I had a certain story and there were so many relationships. I thought about the relationship of Timothy and Lois and Eunice and the person, the daddy that was absent. How many households have we had strong women have to raise children of our own? They had to be the mother and the father. That's a relationship. But Timothy came out okay because he had someone in relationship with him named Paul. And Paul said, I love how Paul put it together. He says, you know what? He says, I'm convinced, I'm persuaded that that same love that dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, he says, I am persuaded that same love is in you. That was some kind of a relationship there. I thought about the relationship with the prodigal sons, the son that says, you know what? I want to go out there and explore. I got to get out of Earlington, Kentucky because some things are waiting for me. Give me my peace. Give me my portion because I'm going to run for it. I'm going to go for the gusto. And then he found himself one day with the pigs. And he says, you know what? I can do better than this. I can go home. My servants have it better than this. And I'm just going to, and he practiced his speech. He, maybe he was a growing toastmaster. He practiced his speech. And I believe that the relationship that that father had with that wayward son, that prodigal son, no matter what, he still looked down the road for his son. And no doubt when he's out in the yard doing something, he wants to look back down the road and he says, Lord, I just want you to show me my son. Just let him come home to me. Come home, my son, come home, my sister. And I'll just do things. 
you know, just come, you know, with, with parents, with a loving parent, no matter what you do, they, we can have mass murders. And, my, and the mother would say, that's my baby. He's a good boy. I love him. Bring him on home. So I believe that I, if I had just stayed a little bit on the prodigal son, the father would have said, just come on home, honey. Get some water for him. Clean him up. Put a ring on him because my baby is here. You did what? Uh-uh. I'm saying you are here. What was done is done. That's a done deal. I have forgiven you because I love you to the bone, my son. Come on home. Well, you got another relationship that's standing by and that re relative happens to be a brother who says, what is going on here? I've been here all the time doing what I do. But his motive was not right because he was saying, I'm going to inherit my stuff now. He has squandered his back. But when God brings you back, he restores you back to full fold. You got another piece of whole heritage waiting for you. Now that's relationship. That's love. That's looking beyond yourself. That's laboring in your heart, going to God and say, hey, God, please let him come home. I need him. I love him. I want him in my life. I could talk about Mary and Martha when Jesus was visiting. Martha was so busy doing the work of the cooking and the cleaning and, and making all the three course, four course meals or whatever it was that she was doing. And she was saying, Lord, look at her. She's not doing, she's not even helping me. And I know you're a guy who's, who's, who's equal opportunity. But he just said to her, Martha, Martha, come on now. What you worry about, uh-uh. She is, she's, she's in position because she's able, she's getting the drippings, but you are worrying about the dripping. Don't worry about that grease. She's getting the real drippings from the word. So we could, I could use Naomi and Ruth and the daughter-in-law that went behind or the daughter stayed. But I thought it's bigger than this. It's about love. It's about letting go. It's about boundaries. It's about you. All of us have a relationship that we could talk about. I could talk about the women at the cross lastly and their relationship with the one who hung on the cross, with the one who died, with the one who rose again. I could think about Mary of Magdala who was delivered from seven devils. Oh, if someone delivered me from seven devils, I would stay too. I would hang out because that person would have been it for me. I could think about Mary, the mother of Jesus, or the, the auntie who was there, Salome. I could talk about Joanna, who was healed also of evil spirits and diseases. She was at the cross. I could talk about Joanna. One thing those women had, they had some resources. Mary Magdalene was not broke. Now, she may have, been, she may have had seven devils, but it says that she gave out of her resources. She bought the bottle of oil that was equivalent to a year's salary. They all had means and they were not too proud to use them. They did not worry about what tomorrow might bring, but they stood there, they were there. When he died, they were there. When he, when he was taken up, they were there. They said one woman even was there so long and then there was another person whose head was cut off. That woman was there to, to, to get it. You know, women have been underestimated in the Bible for many, many years. We have finally come into the true revelation of what the women stood for. We didn't always have to have a name in the Bible, the woman at the well. Oh, I don't think it was any coincidence that she was at the well alone. I don't think it was any coincidence that the Lord sent the disciples to town to get food. Oh, my, 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 I don't think it was any coincidence when this woman says, hey, I, I don't have a husband. He says, you're right about that. You've had six, but you're, you're shacking right now. But when she told him, she had some relationships and she admitted, but this time she met a, a man who had a relationship with truly. And when she ran to tell the others, they didn't see her as the woman who's looking for another husband or who might be looking. They saw her as one who had made a connection. She had made a real relationship. She had put the elements of that relationship together. She knew love. She knew the boundaries. She even had told him, said, you know what? Let's talk about the boundaries here. You know, I'm a Samaritan. You, we, we, don't, we don't do it like this. But, he know, but that love transcended all the elements. And she was home free. 
It took, it took resources. They had it. They gave it. It took the fact that they were mission oriented, that they loved the Lord with all their heart, mind, and soul. And that made them love the neighbor as their self. They didn't fuss against each other about what your role is or what my role is, but they were as one. And that's what true relationships are, are about. So how you relate one to another, whatever we're doing that need to be cleaned up, let's stop it. So sister, do you love me more than these? Am I in first place or I'm in second place? Or maybe do I just make your top five? Can you truly say that you love me like your friend? Can you truly say, Booker T. Washington had a quote and I love it. He says, I will permit no man to narrow or degrade my soul by making me hate them. I think that too often we give permission to people to aggravate, degrade, and cause us to want to hurt them. Can you check to see if there's anything in you that doesn't align itself to the will of God? Do you have any hidden issues? Are you still worrying about that abuse and brokenness? Are you still having the addictive thinking, the addictive behaviors? Are there things that still need to be broken off of you? Do we need to check out faith index? Do we need to check our thoughts, our walks, and our talks? You need to go down to the stronghold more often and get in his presence. And I realized at this point that that scenario I asked you to think about, that scenario, how can you look at your scenario any differently? The, the godly relationship, not ungodly, that scripture that says, I don't remember, I probably talk so fast, but the scripture that says, you know, if it were my enemy, I think that's in Psalms, if it were an enemy, that said this or did this to me, I could understand it, but it was you, my companion, my friend. We had sweet talks and walks together, if it were an enemy. So for any godly relationship, any unthing, ungodly thing that's still on that, this is time, this is my challenge for you. And this is what I believe God has given me to you on the elements of a godly relationship. And as always, that is always, that's my story. And you know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to stick to it. So my question today, I did not have any questions formulated, but I want you to open your mics and reflect on a relationship that you can see a new revelation or about a re relationship that you managed to become an overcomer or victorious over that thing. All right, open mics, it's on you. Elder Gathers, take it away. <laughs> I thought you were telling everybody to open up their mics. Well, I, I was, <laughs> but I'm going to give it back to you in case you want to uh, kind of direct traffic. Okay, well, I have a comment. I, I, I have a comment. When you were talking about the salt, we are the salt of the earth. And Jesus said the same thing. If the salt loses its strength or its savor, how, uh, wherein will it be salted? How could we benefit others if we don't have any salt? And I just want to share something I heard just recently. As you spoke about salt, I thought about the Dead Sea in Israel. I was just in Israel in November last year. And uh, for those of you who've been there before, you would be surprised at how the Dead Sea is just shrinking and shrinking. It's evaporating. It's evaporating. So it's not as high as it used to be when we used to go there in the 90s, the mid 90s and late 90s. The waters have evaporated so much that it hardly even looks like a sea anymore, but it will forever be a sea. And then I heard, and I keep mentioning this guy because I listen to him and I learn a lot from him. He said, uh, the Dead Sea has an uh, has an uh, inlet but it doesn't have an outlet the dead sea receives its waters from the from the from the jordan river 
but the waters don't have anywhere to go. So the Dead Sea constantly receives and receives and receives, but it doesn't let out. So what happens is the fresh waters evaporate and the sea shrinks. And he likened that onto relationships. Funny that you would be talking about relationships today. And mm -hmm. I said, wow. He said, it's like the Dead Sea. It's like some people in a relationship. They receive and receive and receive, but they never want to give. And what happens to that person is he or she begins to evaporate. He, he or she begins to shrink within them on, with their own selves. They're so full of themselves that they begin to shrink from, from within and they don't give. So whatever you have within you, you cannot be a blessing to others because you, can, because you don't have anything to give. You don't give. And I just thought about that as you were talking about relationships today. A relationship shouldn't be a uh, how you used to say it, Mary, Mary uh, get the money, get the money, get the money. <laughs> it shouldn't be get, 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 get. You know, you, 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 have to, you have to give in a relationship because if you don't, then you yourself becomes evaporated. You, you mm -hmm. shrink spiritually. You shrink mm -hmm. spiritually and you're of no good to anyone else because you're not giving the good that is being given to you. That was just a thought on the lesson. Mm, that was a good one. Sister Leotine is uh, unmuted. Did you have a comment, Sister Leotine? Well, I was going to say a couple of things. I thought about um, Lincoln. He said, um, somebody asked him, how do you handle your enemies? And he said, well, I make them my friends. And mm. so sometimes we have to, and you were talking about forgiveness and, you know, and we have to learn how to be forgiven, even when we think it's an enemy, you know, you can win that person over by showing love, even when they have done you wrong. And so we can feel like that's impossible, but with the love of God in you, it's not impossible. Nothing's impossible when we have Christ in our life. And then the other thing I I was thinking about with my son and you had two things my son and then the relationship that I think maybe have gone bad with me was many many years ago that I complained about one of my friends on the job and we had been really close but it was something that she was doing that was upsetting me but I should have gone to her and not just before the whole group and I think that tore that relationship up the other thing was that my son would tell me, mom, I don't want you to talk. I just want you to listen. And mm -hmm. I had to get to the point where I could say, I'm sorry, I'm trying, but I can't stop. I'm always trying to fix your problem. He said, I don't want you to fix my problem. I just <laughs> want you to hear me. I just need to vent. And, and you know, I, I, it, that's one of my hard things to do is to listen. So a relationship, we have to be able to listen to the other person. And I had to work on that with me. And I had to apologize to my son, you know, all the way I would tell him, I'm sorry, I'm just trying. <laughs> but <clears throat> yeah, those are the things that I, and thank you for that lesson today. It was very good and very needed for all, for me, I for sure I know. And I think everybody got something out of it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Sister, Sister Bellamy, praise God. Thank you, Sister Leotine. Yeah, I, you know, I, thank you, Sister Mary. Um, today, uh, you know, when you're obedient to the Holy Spirit, it's hard sometimes, but it's good to be obedient. Mm -hmm. um, today I came out of prayer and he said, call this individual, because we've been, We've known each other for, you know, 50 plus years, but in the last few years, the, the relationship has deteriorated. And I went to the individual and I said, you know, what did I do? You know, talk to me. And, you know, it just kept, they would never say, well, you did this or that or whatever. But today the Holy Spirit said, call that individual. And, and just talk to them. 
So I did, and we talked, and God fixed the relationship today. Praise God. And, you know, that, that was so emotional, but it was, it was good because I was like, I've been praying. I'm like, Lord, I've, I've done what your word said to do. Go to them, go to them with somebody else, you know? And um, so thank you, Sister Mary, because that, you know, that really helped too to put my heart and my mind at rest because it's in this day and age, we need to make sure our relationships are good. If we can't do them, you know, lateral, you know, we can't do them vertical. We can't keep them horizontal good with the people that we know. How can we say we love God and we don't love our brothers and our sisters or fix the relationship? So that that was my thing today. And, and that was a blessing because it took a weight off my shoulders. It took, you know, Amen. to see it fixed and to know that it's fixed. So thank you again for, I'll keep working it because I know it's going to take the work to keep, to get it back. Now, Sister Strong. Bellamy, you just made the devil mad because he didn't want that thing to be uh, fixed. Didn't want yes. it fixed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but so I'll keep working it. Sorry. Amen. I have a question to the panel. <laughs> That's all of you. That's all nine of you. <laughs> I have a question. Has the Holy Spirit ever told you to let go of a relationship? Does anybody have a testimony on that? Because Sister Mary, you talked about being unequally yoked. That doesn't pertain to just marriages, husband and wife. You know, you can be unequally yoked with others as well. It doesn't have to be a spouse. So has any of you ever experienced the Holy Spirit telling you to let a relationship go? I'm just curious. It's just a question. It's not a right or wrong answer. Yes, I've had Sister I've Mary had Jane. Let, let Sister Bellamy go. She was talking. Okay, say it again, Sister Bellamy. I said yes. Um, when I was in the military, there was a couple um, people, even though one was said they were a believer, but the lifestyle didn't... Um, didn't show the fruit of that and I was working with that individual and just God said you know you need to break that relationship and I'm like God you know you said to witness and be a light to and the salt to these individuals and he said that's not your job mm. to just break it and I said okay it was hard but I did and it turned out to be the best because God had somebody else there that they listened to more because that person had walked through some things that they had walked through and I had it. So they were able to minister to them better than I, than I could, so. Amen, thank you, Sister Rosalind. Sister, Sister Mary Jane, you had a, a Yes, um, this relationship that I had, it, it was godly. And, and it was with a friend that I've had for like 20 years. And then it just abruptly ended and it really, had me in turmoil because I was trying to figure out what happened. And I know because I left the place, the other worship place, I think had a lot to do with it. But I always, I'm the type of person, if you're my friend, you're gonna be my friend for life. Mm -hmm. So I tried, I tried, and just recently I tried again. And the Holy Spirit said, I have closed that door. Why are you trying to open it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And to me, it's a, it, I consider a guy relationship, and I'm sure it still is, but that door's closed because now he's opening other doors for other relationships with other mm -hmm. women that I'm not saying that need me, but I need them. But it took me a while to understand that it's not anything I did. And, you know, if that relationship has to end and God closed it, then it's closed. And I remember one time when I was going through a lot of stuff and mom said how I felt about something. And, you know, and I said, mom, God got, got me through losing a child, got losing a husband, losing a home, you know, it's just listed. I said, so I'm going to get through this one. And that's what the Lord brought back to me. 
I brought you through all those other relationships. I'm going to get you through this one because there's other relationships that he has already planned for us. And I've had relationships with, you know, high school friends that are still going on. But this one in particular really hurt me. But you know what? I've used patience. I've used wisdom. And now i got to let it go. It's, it's time to let it go because, and, and I'm not saying, I'm, you know, if they ever reach out, I would be there. But now it's like, okay, I'm moving on. This relationship has taken a lot from me. And I'm not doing that anymore. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, Sister Bellamy also said that sometimes we have to walk away from relationships. There was this one person that I was giving and giving and giving. Mm. But she just couldn't get it. And finally, the Lord told me the same thing. He says, you got to let that person go so I can work on her. I said, okay. And it was kind of hard for her. But after a while, I realized why, because it was really a draining relationship. Where she's at now, I don't know. I pray she's with the Lord. But I think godly relationships can be just as draining as ungodly relationships. And one more thing about Mary. I always have to take her side. <laughs> <laughs> Martha. Because, yes. You mean Martha. I mean Martha. You take Martha's side. <laughs> I take Martha's side. Because she was working. I can, I can see her. I can see her going, man, I got to get this done. The kitchen's not done. I got to make this food. Everybody's sitting there. Because I used to be that way when we would have fellowships here at the house. And, you know, I would be in the kitchen and everybody would be over here and whatever. And then my little brother would come to me and put his arms on me. He said, Jane, Jane. Why are you getting so worked up? Relax. Come over here with us. And they would be like, oh, yeah, why am I getting too worked up? And I think that's what Martha did. I can almost guarantee you when she was talking to the Lord and going, but look, they're sitting and Mary's not doing anything and I'm doing everything. When he looked into her eyes and said, but she's sitting here, you know, like, and I'm paraphrasing, listening to me. I bet you I know for a fact when he she looked into his beautiful eyes the, the light bulb went out and went, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Because I think she was a controller. You know, somebody had to have make sure everything was done. But when she looked into his eyes, she felt and she knew, yeah, you're right. And I can guarantee you she went and sat at his feet, too. So that's my take on Martha. <laughs> and when I go to heaven, I'm going to ask her. And I bet she, she said, oh, yeah, I snapped. It's like, oh, yeah, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm going to go sit next to your feet. <laughs> And anyway, at the end of the thing. day, the potatoes were all the more the best potatoes yes, ever. Right. Totally, totally. And she, right. she, she the was, was good. The, peas the meat were good. was done. She was into <laughs> hospitality. And you know, when people, when you're into, that's what you do. But one of the things I also want to add, and I was listening to your story and also Sister Bellamy, sometimes I think timing is important because we want to change things in our timing. And yeah. it's not God's timing. It's not time for that. And sometimes we have to be the one that, that plants the seed. Somebody else comes along and takes it to a new level. As, as this, Sister Bellamy says, she could not take that person to a place that she hadn't gone. And uh, it wasn't our time. So sometimes let God's will and his timing. But I can tell you also with uh, some persons who, you know, come into our lives and they leave because of somebody else has planted some seeds against you or whatever. But one of the things that I can always, that I would say is as long as you are doing God's will. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people say, oh, I remember when you left my life. It's like, I never left you. I still love you. I never stopped loving you. But when they are so blocked by their own junk, they mm -hmm. can't see see they can't see the way and then when they as they say when you come to yourself it's like the lord said peter peter look the lord wants to sift you and maybe that person would maybe they're sifting they got sifted a little bit but he says i pray for you peter so that you don't fail and when you do repent and turn when you do come to yourself when you do come back then restore your brother so sometimes we can do all we can do, but we can't jump inside of anybody's head or heart and make them love us, make mm -hmm. us, you know, some people are so messed up that they are easily, easily convinced, persuaded 
by someone, and it's not God's way, but because this person represents godliness to them, they think it's right. But that's why you have to study the word for yourself and not let somebody else's opinion shape your thinking. God says, if you look to the hills from whence come at your help, because that person can't, can't make you, can't break you. They don't have a heaven or anything to put you in. If you will look to the hills and you, if you put me first, then I'll give you the very desires of your heart. And so I won't, I don't worry, you know, don't stress. Let not, the Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. You know, don't worry about tomorrow. There are some things that we don't need to burden ourselves to, uh, doing or thinking, but we do all the time. And that's not his will that we would do that. I remember a dear sweet mother of some of ours, Mother Bedford. I remember her standing up in Bible study one night and they were discussing going up to Mount Sinai. Uh, apparently a pastor had gone up to Mount Sinai and some of the people in the group went with him. Some made it all the way to the top. Most of them <laughs> got discouraged and got on a donkey or whatever and turned back around. And I remember Mother Bedford saying, that Mount Sinai was for you. It wasn't for everybody else. You can't take everybody where God is sending you. They didn't go up with Moses to Mount Sinai. He called Moses. He didn't call the whole congregation of Israel. And I tell you, that has resonated with me. And uh, on a spiritual side, God may be taking you someplace. And here you are trying to bring your friends or what did I do? Did I offend you? Are you offended? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. And, and you keep apologizing because you want them, Sister Bellamy, because I've experienced that in life. You want to know what happened to the relationship. We supposed to be friends. Did I offend you? Tell me what I did. Because if like Sister Mayor said, if I don't know what I did, I'm bound to repeat it again. And so we tried to make it right and tried to make it right. And, and, and uh, in the words of uh, Mother, Bell, Mother, Mother Bellamy, in the words of Mother Bedford, you know, maybe it, 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 the, the season is over because you're going somewhere else now. And, and that, might be a, that might be a hard word to receive, but God, the Holy Spirit ministered that to me. Sometimes we want to bring people with us or, you know, you keep apologizing. You, you're apologizing and you don't even know what you did wrong, but you're apologizing for peace sake that you don't want to fall out with anyone. So you, you're you listening to the Holy Spirit, of course, as much as lies in you, if it be possible, as much as lies within you, be at peace with all men, especially those from the household of faith. And so we try to do that and we try to do that. And some relationships just are not meant to be what you want it to be. It'll all, they'll always be our sisters in the Lord. They'll always be our brothers in the Lord. But as far as being your ace boon coon, you know, that might not be God's plan for the mission, the mission that he has you on. That's my story. Yeah, you know, we're, we're going to be misunderstood because we love we love God in different ways and we are in, you know, a different place in him. Mm -hmm. And when someone doesn't understand your journey or your walk, it is hard for them to understand you. But it's no, you can't get mad at them for not knowing. You just have right, to say, right. bless, I'm going on. And you know what? Here's the thing. And maybe they'll catch up or maybe they'll whatever. But sometimes we work much too hard at trying to, mm -hmm. to, to do something when they're not ready. It's not their season. It's not their time. And it's not your job. Right? Amen. Amen. You well, know, Jesus, Jesus himself said, if you go to a city and you bring peace and you preach the word, if they don't receive you, everybody's not going to receive you. Everybody didn't receive Jesus. 
So everybody's not going to receive you. So if they don't receive you, you know, ain't nothing wrong with shaking the dust off your feet and moving on. You've done what God has called you to do. You've gone to try to make amends. You've repented for what you need. You know, you don't even know what you did wrong. And that person sometimes just don't, don't want to forgive. Well, then back off and just pray for them. Sister Annette, where, where is she at? Here I am. Hey, you move positions. I, you, yeah, you she sure I, did. <laughs> I, I, I was looking there. Okay, I know. Go ahead. Amen. I just want to comment to say thanks be to God for placing this element of a godly relationship on your heart for such a time as this. It was the word, it was therapeutic. We all can look introspectively and see that we need that love. We need to look beyond ourselves. We need to lay down boundaries and we need to labor. And sometimes after looking at those relationships, sometimes they get out of balance. And because they get out of balance, it, it seems like it's a struggle. It seems like it's a it's such a chore, but the heart of God is what we need in godly relationships because Amen. what you can do for some, you cannot do for others. And then sometimes the Holy Spirit, all of the time, the Holy Spirit has to quicken you to let you know what is needed at that particular time. Uh, going to the question, people come into your lives for three things, a season, a reason, and a lifetime. Usually the lifetime are so few, you can count them on one hand. So you have to be able to recognize, I heard um, Minister Bishop T.D. Jakes, he gave a sermon one time about when you are moving and when God is elevating you to a new level, sometimes you have to cut the line and let the fish go. You have to throw those fish back. They've been on the line and they're tugging at you and tugging at you and tugging at you, but they're pulling you down and God is trying to take you up. So you have to recognize when it's time to cut that line and let it go because it becomes like an anchor and the anchor has weight on it. And then with the weight on it, it's pulling down. So it's taking you the opposite way of where God is trying to take you. So that's my, um, my take on that question. But I love the way God fashioned it for us today. And I applaud you for the therapeutic because everyone is opening up we're talking it is on point and god moves in mysterious ways everyone has a different way and that wisdom and patience is key in a godly relationship i experienced um this this week a situation with a person and it took so much patience it took so much wisdom in order to get them out of that situation. And, and it's like, okay, Lord, Holy Spirit. So I was in sitting there and it took about 10 hours for this individual in order to do what needed to be done. They needed uh, physical assistance and I'm not the, the strongest person, but I was, I was willing to do it because it was needed. And at the end of the day, that individual said, you are truly a friend. I have never, ever seen anyone that did, that would go that extra mile. And so my response was, it's because I represent God in this situation. It's not about me, but it's about me representing God in this situation. And so Jesus, what did he do? He always went the extra mile. Uh, the Samaritan woman uh, at the well, as you mentioned, he sent the disciples away. He went out of his way in order to have that encounter so that she would understand that love. And so it boils down to unconditional love sometimes. 
but sometimes people are not in that place to receive the unconditional love. But when they receive it, it brings tears to, to their eyes because they've never ever had anyone to, um, to be with them like that or to show that unconditional love. So that's my story and I'm sticking <laughs> with it and I'm done. Thank you so much. All right. Amen. Sister Linda, we, we haven't heard from you and it's almost wrapping up time. Who did you I just go on? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I'm just sitting here eating. That's just what I'm doing. <laughs> I have just enjoyed this so much and it's been a big help to me. Um, I've gone through some things in my life and I've experienced the hurt when you show love to people. I've gone to people um, when I could feel the tension and I've tried to do what the word says and you go to them and you try to get it right and then it's not received. And I walk away and I seem to carry that burden just as mm. I carried the burden of things that were said to me. Um, but I see God working on me now. Um, I'm nice. coming out of I'm coming out of here. Um, <laughs> I remember um, someone had turned around and told me that when you've done what the word says do, and you've gone to someone, and I've apologized for things I haven't done, you know. Mm. But if they don't receive you, then go back and get another one and go back to them. And if they don't receive that, I've never taken it any further. I just kind of shake the dust from my feet and go on but still heard about it and carrying it inside. So this has really helped me a lot today. Um, Elder Gathers asked the question about, um, have you ever been led by the spirit to just let a relationship go? Well, I was led by the spirit before that to not get involved in it. Don't do it, I'm telling you don't. Mm -hmm. And I stood there because the person, the devil has a way of doing stuff. The person showed up and confronted me. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not going anywhere. Just stay there. I'll be back. And I went back and I had to suffer the consequences of that. And it wasn't pretty. So mm -hmm. I, I can relate to a lot of different things here without getting into a long drawn out thing about it. I can relate to a lot of different things here. But y'all have just helped me. And I'm just sitting here, like I said, I'm just sitting here eating, saying, okay, Lord, okay, here we go. Freedom, okay, I'm ready. I am ready. So I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Amen. You know, Sister Linda, you said something uh -huh. for a second, and I was listening, and I, I'm thinking sometimes God says something, and we interpret it. We have to make sure we got the real message. Sometimes he says, uh -huh. just step away for just a little bit. Uh -huh. Just step away, take an off ramp, and it'll be okay. Sometimes we just have to walk away and mm -hmm. let God do what God does. And then, because God is a God of relationships. Yes. And he, he is a God of restoration. And mm -hmm. it, you know what? It may not happen in our season. It may mm -hmm. happen years from now when you stumble into a person. Uh -huh. We don't even know, you know, having, having worked at the VA for many years, I have said things to people, to patients for, for the good. And uh, it's years ago and they would come back and say, do you remember when you told me that? And, and I'm, they're so excited. I'm thinking, I don't have a clue. Cause you know what? Sometimes we say things that God drops on us and we don't remember, you know, but if you happy, I'm happy, you know, but mm. sometimes I think he says, just, just shh. Mm -hmm. walk away step away as the as the song says walk this way and he'll work it out but just just let him do just let him be and then when you go to sleep at night if you have done your part you can still rest and you don't take that stuff to the bed you don't take it and hold on to it otherwise amen uh, you, you'll be against his will I, i'm amen. not gonna let you I'm not going to, you know what, you got to do a lot to steal my sleep anyway, because uh, I do like my father-in-law said, sometimes I fall asleep on my way down to the pillow, so I don't have time to worry about anything else much after mm -hmm. that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Um, Sister Melanie, and I think it's Sister Nicole, right? We've heard from no, everybody. Nicole was on, but that's not her number. Okay. She well, the phone on. number, 830. 
if, I don't know. if you all would like to have words, we would love to hear from you. But if not, it's your choice. <laughs> Sister, Mel Sister Melanie always comes on and doesn't speak. She said, but I'll be listening. <laughs> and that's good. <laughs> Praise God. Well, Sister Mary, thank you so much for the teaching on a godly relationship, elements of a godly relationship. And uh, we're all going to take it to heart and let it abide in our spirit, man, so that we can determine, like the tribe of Issachar, the times and the seasons, you know. I like what you said, Sister Annette. That people come into your life for, uh, I wrote it down, a season, a reason, and a lifetime. So just like the tribe of Issachar was blessed to know the times and the seasons and the seasons of God, you know, we pray for discernment. They had the, they had the uh, blessing of discernment. And so we pray that God would give us that discernment, you know, uh, do you chase after a relationship or do you back off and just let it go or do you, you you know what exactly to do because we hey people are people we've all had experiences with people so let us seek god to know how to move and when to move when relationships are not uh going right amen amen well it, it is 5 30 right now sister annette i'm gonna ask you to close us out in prayer and remember sister francis brathwaite and remember sister linda bunch that's going to have surgery on Thursday, right? Thursday. Okay. Okay. We open up in prayer. So father, let's close in prayer. Father yeah. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just thank you for this time around your word. God, we thank you for uh, pricking our hearts, oh God, and our minds and our souls and our spirits, oh God. And we thank you for a greater understanding through your word about these hidden issues and uh, relationships, oh God, because you are a God of relationship. Now, I pray that you will put back into the woman of God who has prayed and who has poured out what you've given to her, restore it, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we all, would, that she will be the better for it. Now, Father, I pray uh, for the prayer request that we have received on today. I pray for Sister Frances, who uh, is in Bamsey Hospital on the seventh floor. Father, I pray that you would dispatch your healing power, your yes. healing angels and of protection around her, God, to raise her up, that she will be a living testimony, God for yes, your Lord. glory. Father, and then I pray for Linda Bunch, who will have surgery on Thursday at 6 a.m., that God, you will go in and that you will guide the hands of the surgeons, the anesthesiologists, yes. all of the people that are in the operating room, oh God, that she will come forth like pure gold, oh God, and you will set her up as your trophy, oh God. Heal her body, take care of her, protect her, keep her from hurt, harm, or danger while she's in there, oh God, and let it be a swift recovery according to your will, your plan, and your purpose for her life, oh God. And then as we depart from this meeting, I pray, oh God, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, ladies. Love you. Amen. Love Love you guys. Guys. Right. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy yeah. the rest of your weekend. <laughs> so Verify. three of us have to, Verify. 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 Have to stay Verify. back, right? I'm sorry. I said to verify that Francis is at Bamsey. I think that's where she's at, but I know last time she was at the VA, so make sure she's at Bamsey. Call if you guys are going to go see her. Make sure she's I at thought, Bamsey. That's I thought you said Bamsey seventh floor. That's yeah, what I wrote I, down. I know. But I said verify. Call and verify before you go. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sure will. Sure will. Okay. All right. Amen. 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 Yeah. All right. Yeah. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.
Fran, have a blessed you, rest of um, the week and weekend. To, um, and I just I just have a comment, Sister Mary Wooldridge and Sister Annette Williams. Uh, would you all want to wait until the rest of our crew is on before? Because I really want to have a discussion about the third row operation and uh, the uh, upcoming uh, conference in October. But since it's only two of us here, well, three, I would rather uh, suggest that we wait until uh, the rest of the crew are on board so that we can have a Zoom meeting because we have too many people out. Would, would you all be okay with that? Or do you, I mean, if you want to meet now, the three of us, we can, but I suggest we wait until the other three are here. Well, um, I just, uh, I guess I had, a, don't we uh, normally say, I, say what went wrong, what could go better? And... I, think we, I think we stick to protocol. Yes, that's you're right. That's yeah, stick to protocol and we can defer what, what's due for the next time for another time. Okay. See you later, Sister Steven. See you later, Sister Linda Bunch. See you later. <laughs> okay, I'm still trying to figure out how to get out. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you all. Well, thank Love you, guys. Thank you, thank thank you, you for again. the beautiful song. Thank you, thank you. Bless you. It's the red leave. button. Say leave. Leave this meeting. <laughs> I got you. Thank you. Your nails, the are red button. Your nails are beautiful. Your nails are beautiful.